Hey, Captain Paul here from the locker room. We're going to be going right into a New York Rangers preview. How will they do? How will the new coach, Peter Laviolette, fare? Will there be any defensive improvement with his new system? And will the Rangers feel some of the departures that have happened thus far this season? But before I keep going into it, I appreciate if you guys can drink a, drop a like on this video. Comment down below. Give me your thoughts. Uh, throughout this video and where you think my kind of head's at but let's go into it the new york rangers currently forty six thousand dollars over the cap that shouldn't be too big of a deal to kind of fix that's just some minor moving uh, and can uh, excuse me cap manipulation um new head coach peter laviolette and i think laviolette would be perfect or should say she will be perfect for them because i i feel like while galant's a good coach has taken teams to a stanley cup championship has not saying winning it but taking them to the finals has made them good playoff teams uh, Gallant's a good coach I, I wouldn't completely blame Gallant for some of the failures that the Rangers had last season but I do think his system makes it so players aren't defensively accountable and that's a complete juxtaposition to what Peter Laviolette brings as a head coach I mean he was just with the New York Islanders he's actually the first coach uh, what I did the research about going for that went from the Islanders to the Rangers directly um, in the history between these two organizations, which I kind of found fascinating. You guys can fact check me on that, but I looked into it and that does seem to be the case. And he's known for his defensive prowess. Whether that was Philly, Nashville, New York Islanders, he was always good at making his teams defensively responsible and accountable. And I think that is what they need because the Rangers have fantastic goaltending, has some good offensive punch, but defensively at times they have the talent, but the structure wasn't there. Let's break into the forwards here. So they lose Vladimir Tarasenko, who they acquired at the deadline to make a deep playoff push. Uh, he went with the Ottawa Senators. And, you know, that should work up there up north. I think Tarasenko might be able to return to form. But, yeah, that's a big departure. Then Patrick Kane. He's kind of in flux. We don't know exactly what's going on. He had to have that hip procedure done. Will he be back in a New York Rangers uniform? I think it would actually be really intelligent if he took... You know, just a one-year deal, kind of a prove-it deal. See that he's back healthy uh, and sign with the Rangers because I think the Rangers have some talent. So, But right now, I'm going to go over the current construction of the Rangers. All right? All right. So, this is cat-friendly. I'm not saying there's going to be lines because I don't think it will be. But in, in cat-friendly, for whatever reason, they have uh, Chris Kreider, Mika Zabinijev, and Kaku. I don't think he'll be on the first line. I, maybe I'm wrong, but... Second line, they have Vincent Trocek, uh, Panarin, and Wheeler. Now, Wheeler, I liked that addition, right? Uh, bringing him in, uh, essentially kind of on a me minimum contract, just a little bit above it, $800,000. Uh, he had 55 points last season, 16 goals, 39 assists for 72 points. He's a very good player, and for the cap hit he's getting, that's ridiculous production. I could actually see Blake Wheeler being around 60, maybe 70 points with the right line combination. Uh, for me... I would see Wheeler more on that first line, if anything, you know, going with Zvenijev and Kreider uh, and making a really a dynamic first line. But um, I also do kind of see, admittedly, the benefit of having Wheeler and Panarin together. Uh, but I, it, it's just going to be kind of interesting because Panarin and Wheeler are more assist-heavy than goal-scoring. So for me, I, I don't know if them as a line combination would completely work, but I mean, in premise, it could work. Trocek is a very capable center, so that's not bad. The kids, the kids is the kid line, what they called it. Uh, Kaku, Lafreniere, and Hedl. I reference Kaku because he has the first line on this. They got to keep developing. Kaku had 40 points in 82 games played, 18 goals, 22 assists. Uh, a little bit invisible at times. Uh, some really good games at times, but sometimes he was just invisible. Hedl saw, I thought, a really good bump. 22 goals, 23 assists for 45 points, and only 74 games played. Hedl looked very good. Uh, I think there's more there, though. I think there's more you can get from Hedl. I, he, they need these young kids to actually start being viable top six options. And that's kind of the interesting situation that they're now put in is now due to some of the, you know, the acquisitions um, and some of the departures, one of these guys has to take that next step. Lafreniere, he's back, two-year deal, $2.325 million per year on that two-year. Uh, last year, 81 games played, 16 goals, 23 assists, and 39 points. He's only 21 years old. And Ranger fans, I, I got to say this. 
I know you had, I believe that was this Tim Stutzler draft, right? I believe so. I know there's been some people in that draft that have been absolutely fantastic and have come into their own. But players do develop at different paces. I see a really good promising and potential future with Lafayette. Good size, pretty strong on his skates, uh, pretty good hands. I think he's got a good shot. There's there's pieces of a really good player there, but I, I just needs a little bit more time to develop. And and this is just my personal opinion. This is why I think I know he was drafted like really high for silver so high. And he's he's that guy for the New York Rangers, right? He's that guy that like, oh, he's gonna be the future. Yeah, it was in 2020. Yeah, so 2020 draft. I believe that was Tim Stutzlis. Sometimes these players benefit from playing minor league or playing junior again. I think Lafreniere would have benefited from not immediately going to the NHL. I know the first overall status, people want him to play, they want to see him. But I think he needed a little bit of time. And with everything that was going on during that whole situation, um, I think his development got stunted a bit. But, you know, 39 points, almost you know, almost a 40-point score. He's only 21. There's more there. I think some Ranger fans are fed up with Lafreniere. But I, I, I think there's potential there. I do. Maybe I'm an optimistic, and admittedly, that's what I try to be on this channel. But there's tools there with Lafayette that I'm like, yes, like he can become a very good player. Am I saying he's ever going to become a superstar? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But could he become a high quality top six winger? I think the potential's there. Now, a guy that I don't think is going to be with the Rangers is, I think, Goudreau. Goudreau. With his cap hit and his production, I, I don't know who would take him at 3.64, but it would be smart if they could ship off that deal. And then the fourth line of uh, Vesey, uh, Benino, and Pitlick. I think that's a quality fourth line with some energy. And Vesey can, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Vesey can, uh, he can contribute a little bit offensively. He wasn't what people thought when he was signed as a UDFA. They thought he was going to be the next big thing. But went to the Rangers, I believe, initially. Shipped out elsewhere. And then kind of found himself. And, and he's, he's really rounded into a good fourth line player. And he can be okay in a third line um, temporarily. So up front with the New York Rangers, I, I like I like them. Are they the most explosive offense in the Eastern Conference or in the NHL? No, but they're quality. They're going to be at least league average with the potential to be an above average offensive output team. Yeah, they lose Tarasenko. Yeah, they lose Kane. Those guys were they. Those were guys they acquired in the deadline. But I think they're young guys like Hedl, Lafreniere, Kaku. Like they can take another step. This Rangers team will go as far as those young kids develop. If they're going to be a Stanley Cup champion, if they're going to be a Stanley Cup contender, those guys need to become at least second line quality so they have enough secondary scoring. So let's go into the defense. So Ryan Lindgren, former Boston Bruin before he was traded. Ryan Lindgren to um, Adam Fox. Well, he was a prospect, but... Very good deep pair. Uh, they match each other well. Lindgren plays a, a very physical style. I, I just, I love his energy. Man, I would love to just, <laughs> I wish the Bruins kept him as a prospect, but I love what he is as a defenseman. Um, but he gets hurt because the physical style he plays. He played 63 games last season, one goal, 17 assists for 18 points. And then Adam Fox offensively is a fantastic defenseman. 82 games played, 12 goals, 60 assists for 72 points. And I'm not saying this, Ranger fans do not get mad at me, but just watching Adam Fox, when he decides to play defensively, he's fantastic. You know, I think he can be like a Brian Leach type for his career. He's kind of got similar build. He's like an inch shorter than Leach off the top of my head because Leach was what, six, six feet or six feet one. So it might be an inch or two shorter than Leach, but uh, when he's in locked in defensively, he's really good. The one time that I've noticed, like kind of going over film with Adam Fox is because He's so offensively gifted, he'll leave his defensive responsibility at times to go like get involved in the rush. And then when a turnover happens in transition, it's just odd man rushes and they turn into goals at times. But I'm not saying he's a bad defenseman by any man's stretch of the imagination. He's very good. Um, but I think pay, under Peter Laviolette, he'll be asked to be far more defensively responsible. And you might see a little bit of dip in points. Um, am I saying he's going to be like a 20 point guy? No, he'll probably still be around 50, 60 points. Um, I mean, maybe he could score 70 again, but I think, uh, yeah, I think Adam Fox under LaViolette 
that's going to be a match made in heaven because you're going to have a guy that's going to be a little bit more defensive responsible, but also give you enough offense to uh, from the back end that's going to be uh, impactful. Um, and then the, the second deep pairing here is Keandre Miller and Jacob Truba. I love this pairing. Truba is a physical defenseman, played all 82 games last season. Eight goals, 22 assists for 30 points. And he's physical. Man, when he had that hit, <laughs> when he knocked the crap, uh, what was it, Kadri, I think it was? Man, like, Truba has some ridiculous hits, and he's a lot of fun to watch in that respect. When he used to be with the Winnipeg Jets, I, I like that aspect of his game. He's a big, big physical defenseman, captain, and I think Keandre Miller, that's the perfect D pair because they're both physical. Like, Keandre Miller is 6'5", and he's, I loved what I saw from him offensively last year. Nine goals, 34 assists for 43 points. I think there's, uh, you know, Keandre Miller. This might sound blasphemous to say this. I think Keandre Miller, you could argue, is their best, best or second best pure defenseman on that team. Low to play against, physical, very good with his defensive stick, makes great defensive plays. I really like Keandre Miller's game. Only 23. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like Keandre Miller. I like a lot of his game, and I think the sky's the limit with that guy. So I like that deep pairing. Now, Eric Gustafson and Brandon Schneider. Gustafson, solid defenseman. You know, good offensive production for that third pairing role for what he'd be in. Uh, I'm just not too sure with the sixth defenseman on this roster. Will it be Schneider? Will it be Jones? Uh, who will be that guy that fits in? Schneider's only 21 years old. Will he kind of hit that next step in his development? Will he be, uh, will he hit that gear? That's kind of where it is. But I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world for your bottom pairing defense to be young, kind of learning on the job because you can kind of hide them, right? You can hide their minutes and kind of have favorable matchups usually. Uh, so when I look at this defense, it's a, it's a, I think this is an above average defense. I like their top four, top six to me. I mean, sorry, I like their top four. Their bottom pairing, I'm not as sure. I think Gustafson's fine, but I, I'm not sure who that sixth guy will be. Uh, looking, probably might be Schneider because he did play 81 games last season, but can Schneider take that next up? Um, that'll be important. So I think that's a real, that's an above average decor. I, I like it. I like it a lot. And then goal, goaltending. You got Igor Shosturkin. Now, if you watch my top five goaltenders in the NHL right now, he's number one for me. That's it. That's all I can say. I mean, I know the statistics last season weren't like as good as his Vezina winning, but the guy made some amazing saves and was kind of put in some rough situations by the Rangers team defense and bad uh, turnovers in transition. Igor Shosturkin is just a, he's the price, he's the worth of, uh, he's, <laughs> he's worth the price of admission. And it's fantastic to me, right? Think about it. And I know it's not all like in sequence, but you, know, you went from Richter. I mean, you, you had Blackburn there for a minute, but then that shoulder injury, so he had to use two blockers. But you, you went from Richter, Lundquist, and then Shesterkin. I know Rick, Rick, Richter to Lundquist is a little bit like of a transition between those years. But I mean, man, the Rangers find good goaltenders. They really do. And then the backup, Jonathan Quick, Connecticut boy from the area. Six foot one. I mean, Quick won a, another Stanley Cup as a backup this time. Uh, Quick, you look at those numbers, that save percentage, that win loss. Oh, that's not great. But listen, you just need Quick to play 30 games. I think at this point in his career with Quick, 41 games is too much. Uh, when I watched him with the Knights, I still see some flashes of a good goaltender. They had Halak last year. And I, I think Quick will actually be an upgrade over Halak. I think Quick's got, uh, or at the very least, kind of the same thing. So I'm not too worried. I think Quick will improve his numbers with the Rangers, especially with Peter Laviolette being brought into the system. You, know, you might see some flashes of a well-wristed quick, uh, well quick, excuse me, that looks a little bit like his prime. Am I saying he's going back to prime, Jonathan Quick, when he went on those Stanley Cup runs? No, but a well-rested Quick, you might see the best version of him. So what I'm, I'm looking, right? The, when, I, when I'm looking at this New York Rangers team as a whole, um, and I actually like their third goalie with Louis, Louis Domingue being in that system. Uh, the, the one interesting thing here is like they have that six foot seven kid, uh, Boyko. Um, I think their prospects are going to take a little bit of time. Um, they need to develop a good backup goaltender for uh, Shesterkin, so getting quick makes sense. When I look at the Rangers, I mean, 
I think above average offense, above average defense, uh, uh, one of the best goaltenders in the world. This is a team that's going to finish top three in the Metro. They will be competing for that top spot. I think they have everything you want in a team. Um, I like this team quite a bit. They're going to be a good team to play against. And, you know, they'll, they'll find a situation to get underneath the cap with the little amount that's going to cost. Um, shouldn't be that too big of a deal. Like 46000 you can shave that pretty quick. And if they do decide to uh, move Goudreau, that'll be pretty easy. But, you know, for me, I'm going to be doing rankings with my good friend Fajardo, who's a Rangers fan. We're going to be doing the ranking videos like where we believe teams are going to finish. But if I, if I had to give you one right now, I think they're going to be finished one or two in the Metro. Yeah, you lose Tarasenko. Yeah, you lose Kane. But there might be a chance Kane comes back. And these young kids, if they develop, maybe Tarasenko is not missed. Maybe, maybe with Tarasenko, and maybe even if Kane just leaves as well, right? Let's say they're both gone. That gives Lafreniere, Kaku, Hedl, that, that gives them the chance to show, hey, we're the future of this team, we're the future of this organization, and we're going to show you this season. So it will be interesting to see how this pans out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. The last one went really, really well. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people enjoyed it. Um, so I'll be doing a season preview of each and individual team. I'll try to get this up. I might have to start doing two a day, but uh, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my last live stream sent in my resignation for my job. So while I'm going through this process, I'll have a little bit more time to make some videos and have some fun. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, comment. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to do so already. We'll be having that gift card giveaway really soon once we reach 5,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, hey, if you do, giveaway opportunity. But I'm Captain Paul. I'll see you in the next one.